Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is good to be in God's house today. Amen. Amen. Good to see each and every one of you. Those of you that have been away, good to see you back. Good to see uh, Brother Ray and Miss Tracy back with us and everything. And, uh, it is, as I said, to be good in God's house. Good to see Brother Melvin and Miss Ann this morning. Amen. Good to see them this morning. And you can't see him, but little man's back there, too. <laughs> Xander. Xander. Okay. Well, I called him little man, but that's all right. He's back there kicking his legs. He looks as happy as he can be, but Bob said he might not stay that way. He likes his bottle, and I believe that got his bottle this morning. The bottle, the bottle, the uh, meal. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that might not work out too good. That might not work out too good. And everything, but... Uh, Anyway, he looked happy this morning and everything, and I hope everyone's doing well today. And uh, we're going to ask you to get a songbook and turn to page 293. Very familiar song. Many of you won't need that songbook more than likely. We're going to sing Amazing Grace this morning. Aren't we thankful for God's grace today? Amen. Amen. Crystal, get the piano player going for us back there in a minute. Yesterday to visit with uh, Miss Marie and Miss Evelyn both, and I want us to be in much prayer for both of these dear ladies, especially Miss Evelyn. Miss Evelyn, uh, to be honest, we we didn't have much of a visit with her again yesterday. I don't know exactly what's going on with Miss Evelyn, but they've got Miss Evelyn pretty well knocked out, and. Uh, uh, we were there around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. Of course, Miss Wendy said that she's visited her with her earlier, uh, long about midday, and she's the same way, uh, just out. 
in everything. I'm not real sure exactly everything that's going on. We're going to try and talk to Barbara this week. Uh, Miss Barbara did convey to us this week that she'd like to see Miss Evelyn be able to come back to church. But honestly and truthfully, I don't see this happening unless the Lord intervenes. I'm not sure if they're sedating her or what's exactly going on. When I say that, Miss Melissa took uh, her by the hand and we both spoke to her yesterday and she just barely could open her eyes when we were there. So we need to be in much prayer for her and everything and pray that God will reach down and touch her and help her during this time. And then we went across and visited with Miss Marie. Now Miss Marie uh, sat up in the chair yesterday for about 30 minutes. Uh, they're getting her up slowly. Uh, her, she's in good spirits yesterday. Uh, I believe she talked with you ladies and everything. Melissa did a video chat with some of you ladies that could. Uh, she thoroughly enjoyed that and everything, seeing you ladies that, that she could and everything. And uh, But she's doing uh, good and everything, so just continue to pray for her. Pray that God will help her get through this rehabilitation time. Pray that God will just reach down and touch her and continue to heal that bone that is uh, fractured and everything. But uh, she's doing good. Pray for Brother James. Brother James looks a little tired now. I'm going to be honest with you. A little tired and everything. And, uh, so pray for him. Pray that God will help him and strengthen him. And pray for him and the insurance adjuster. <laughs> Many of you know that Brother James' uh, uh, daughter-in-law uh, was riding together and Susan was driving and of course they hit a deer. Uh, I think James and the insurance man are not getting along right now <laughs> and everything. So just pray for that need as well. Brother James wants his car fixed and everything. So pray for that. And then, of course, Brother James did call us again yesterday evening. Uh, pray for Miss Susan, their daughter-in-law. Uh, Todd had to take her to the emergency room yesterday evening after they got back from visiting with Miss Marie. Uh, she told Todd that her chest didn't feel right. Something just didn't feel right. So he took her up to High Point Hospital and come to find out she's had a cough for a pretty good while now, and she's got pneumonia in one lung. So just be in much prayer for Miss Susan this morning as well. Pray that God will reach down and touch her and help her. Uh, if y'all wondering where Brother James is, Brother James over at Claps with Miss Marie this morning. He called me. He did let me know he was going on over there, and I told him that was all right, that I understood. Amen. But y'all just be in much prayer for that entire family there as well. And uh, just continue to pray uh, one for another. Pray for Brother Paul and Miss Annette, as far as I know, they'll be back with us next week. Then got into their new home. Amen. Uh, I think Brother Keith sore this morning from helping them get in their new home yesterday and everything. But I think he said they got everything out, everything's moved. So just be in much prayer. Y'all know how it is when you move into a new place, you got to get everything in place mm -hmm. and everything. So uh, just pray for them as well. Pray that God will reach down and touch and uh, help them as well. And uh, do we have any outspoken prayer requests this morning? Yeah, Paula and Curtis asked for the church to pray for them a place either to rent or to buy. Uh, they'll be down here actually today in one month. Okay, just be in prayer for Miss uh, Paula and Brother Curtis. They have yet to find a place here. Uh, honestly, they're probably going to have to rent a place before they can buy a place. Uh, one of the realtors has already told them that and everything for them to come here and get established um, and everything because a lot of things have changed now when you live out of state when you come in you can't keep your driver's license none of that stuff you have to swap all that stuff out right away and you have to have a current address and all there's just a lot of things going on there so just pray that God will reach down and touch that need uh, how many of you know we need a roof over our head amen yeah and everything so just pray that God will help them in that situation as well uh, I'd ask y'all to pray for uh, my uncle this morning uh, his name's Winford but we call him Wimpy uh, he's my daddy's brother and everything he's the only uh, well I ain't gonna say he's the only brother he's the only whole brother that my uh, the siblings that's left my dad does have two half brothers that are living but uh, he's a uh, He's the brother that uh, my daddy grew up with. They run around together, play ball together and everything. But he's in the hospital not having a real easy time. He's got a lot of things going on. So pray for him this morning uh, 
and everything. Anyone else this morning with outspoken prayer requests? Let's pray for Brother Jerry. Yeah, pray for Brother Jerry Brown this morning. He's able to be with us last week. It was good to see him, but I know he's taking a treatment this week, and he said those treatments really work on him. So y'all just be in much prayer for Brother Jerry as well. He needs our prayers. Anyone else? Thank let's, you. Let's yep. remember my grandson. He went away to college, and uh, you know he don't like to be away from home and stuff. So let's pray for him. Amen. Let's yeah. pray for Miss Jane. Pray for his family. Too. Bobby's grandson <laughs> there. Pray for his family. Y'all miss him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's not easy to let them go sometimes and push them out the nest always. Amen. So let's just yeah, be let's in with prayer. Let's also remember Maddie has yes. for such. Uh, she's my cousin's daughter, who's first time going away to college at, at State <laughs> too. Uh, my cousin's not handling it that well either. Uh, her only daughter. Uh, so um, let's remember. Let's remember all the kids that's going back to college, and also the school kids that start school now yes. and will be starting in two weeks. And the teachers. Yes, the teachers yes. too, yes. Let's just remember our schools, period. Yes. I mean, yes. Everyone that's in those schools, teachers, yes. staff, students. Um, yeah, I keep my daughter and her teacher assistants in your prayers because they've got a situation. That... Okay. Well, Nobody there's, needs. <laughs> there's a lot of things going on in our school systems. When you put them on the bus or you let them go, you always need to pray that God returns them back home That's safely right. to you. Amen. Yeah. Because you just never know. Yes, uh, remember uh, my and Melissa's daughter-in-law too. She's got some kind of spot on her chest. It's a hole in her chest. It's like a pencil lid. Like a and it won't stop lid. bleeding. And they can't get her in until next Thursday. So y'all just be in much prayer for her as well. And uh, pray for our grandchildren, your grandchildren, uh, children in period. Because uh, our grandsons are going back to public school this and year. And one will be in, in high school, and he's got to stay Tuesday all day <laughs> without his mom. <laughs> y'all pray, y'all pray for that boy because he's uh, he's 14, and he tells Papa all the time, "I'm a man." <laughs> I'm worried about him, but y'all just pray for him. Listen, uh, Miss Stephanie brought it up. I think it was the other week. We just need to pray for our school system. That's right. Yes. Pray for our nation. Amen. We, we always remember that in the men's prayer room. Always remember to pray for our nation. Amen. I mean, you know, our nation needs prayer. Amen. Amen. And pray for our homes. Amen. Pray for the homes of this nation. Amen. Anyone else with prayer requests this morning? All right. Maybe just find an uplifted hand this morning. We're going to ask Roger to come on and receive the offering and pray for these needs in the offering this morning. <laughs> Let's pray. Our eternal gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have today to be in your house, Lord, and just to be able to worship you. In spirit and in truth today, Father, we do thank you. And Father, we just pray for each and every one of these needs, Father. We ask you to reach down and touch the needs according to thy will, Father. Touch Miss Evelyn this morning, Lord, and put your hand upon her. And Sister Marie and Brother James, Lord, we lift them up to you. And Brother Jerry, Father, we just pray that you can touch them and help them, Father, and touch them through these sicknesses, Lord, and the things that's going on in their lives, Lord. We just pray that your mighty hand would be upon them. And Lord, we want to say thank you today, Father, for answering the prayer for Brother Paul and Sister Annette, Father, for giving them a new place to live, Father, and for working all those things out and helping them, Father. And Father, now we ask you to bless their home and put your hand upon it, Lord, and bless them, Father, and touch them and help them in the days and weeks to come, Father, that they can settle down, Father. And, Lord, we just pray and ask you to go with us throughout this day and have your hand upon the service today, Father. Bless those who will be watching today, Lord. Put your hand on them, Lord, and, and the ones that are in, in the midst today, Father. And if there be one in the midst or one watching, Father, that don't know you in the free pardon of sin, Father, I pray this will be the day you reach down and finger that heart and that soul and draw that person to you, Lord, and save them before it's eternally everlasting too late. 
And then, Father, we just pray today for our schools, Lord, for our children, Lord. We pray for this new school year, Father, that you keep all the staff and, and, and the teachers and everyone safe, Father, in each and every school throughout this nation, Lord. Lord, the colleges, Lord, touch them and keep those folks safe. Keep the students safe, Father. Put your hand upon this need, Father, and upon this nation, Father, and help us today, Lord. And now, Lord, just go with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us, Lord. And, Lord, I pray and ask you to bless the offering and take and use it for the building of thy kingdom. These things we pray and ask all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. One way of announcements for the church, don't forget about next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, be our prayer rooms. And uh, please come and be a part of our prayer rooms if, if you can. And then our service at 10.30 uh, next Sunday morning. Come and be a part of our service next Sunday morning. And then Wednesday evening, our remote service at 7 o'clock. Now, I want to encourage you to watch our remote service if at all possible. We are uh, doing a study now in the book of Romans and taking a look in the book of Romans. So please, uh, please, if you will, if you can, if you can't see us when we're live, uh, pick it up later and watch it. Amen. And then don't forget about next Saturday morning at 10 o'clock will be our visitation time again. Uh, that'll be at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. Now, I know not all of you can come. Many of you are work. Uh, many of you are working, and I understand that. Many of you are unable to, but you can pray. Amen. Pray that God will lead and guide and direct us and help us. Amen. And then you see there, Brother Bob Whitaker is going to come and be with us uh, on uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, Brother Bob's uh, out at his uh, former church, the first church that he ever pastored, and he is helping those folks out. But uh, I called him and uh, asked him if he'd come preach for us. Uh, pastor needs a little preaching, too. I need a little preaching. Amen. So Brother Bob's agreed that he'll come and preach for us on that uh, Sunday. Now, we're not going to have a meal or anything. We're just going to have service that day and everything. So y'all be in much prayer for Brother Bob. He said to tell all of you, thank you for praying for him in the death of his sister, the passing of her. And he's looking forward to coming and being with us that Sunday morning at 1030. So be in much prayer for that service. Pray for the love and the unity of our church and pray one for another. Amen. And I have a couple cards that I'm going to read to us, and then uh, we're going to go on with the preaching this morning. We're not going to have a special Miss Annette was due to sing, but we're not going to worry about it today. So if you want to get your Bible ready while I'm, uh, 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 I can't even think, while I'm reading these cards, you can. We're going to be in the book of John, this, uh, the book of Luke this morning, excuse me, the book of Luke this morning and everything. But I got two cards I want to read to you here this morning. One is from the Duncan family. Now, this is my cousin, Sheila. And y'all know back here a few months ago, her husband passed away. And uh, she wants us to know, she said this, she said, I would like to say thank you for all your prayers for Odell and us. You all are so much, you all are so much, you all feel so much like family to me. Love you all, and again, thank you, Sheila. It says, during a time like this, we realize how much our friends and relatives really mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered, the Duncan family. And I'll leave that back in the back for you to take a look at. And then I have a card here from uh, Sister Marie, and everything that she wanted us to read, and it's got a pretty couple birds on the front, and I'll leave it back there, too. It says, thank you to each one that had had a part in my in making my birthday so special. So thankful for my church family and all you have done in recent months. God is so good and so faithful. We love each one so much. James and Marie, Todd and Susan Butcher. And uh, do please continue to pray for the Butcher family. Amen. And be in prayer one for another. Amen. In the book of Luke this morning, we're going to take a look at some scriptures found in the book of Luke this morning and everything. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Miss Wendy, I about I let it slip my mind. That's okay. But in the book of Luke this morning, in Luke chapter 16, some very familiar scripture found in the book of Luke this morning. That's all right. 
There we are. Everybody hear me? Book of Luke this morning, chapter number 16. You're getting turned there. Pastor's getting hooked up here and everything. Uh, if I was going to entitle this message and everything, uh, I'd just simply entitle it this. Two. Two. I got my sister's attention. Miss Crystal always asks me what the title of my message is. And if I was going to entitle this message, I would entitle it just simply two. If you want to write that down, you can. I know that sounds strange, but it'll come clear here in just a few minutes. But here in the book of Luke, we find some very familiar scripture about two men. Two men. Two different men from two different walks of life, if you will. And uh, I've thought about it a lot this week and, and looking at things. And uh, I've looked at different people, if you will, down through the years. And uh, people that I know and people that I've known in recent years. And uh, I couldn't help but think about what Solomon writes when he said, All is vanity. Everything is vanity. Meaning that if you go through this life and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, in all reality, this life has no meaning. And uh, if you think about it, and I know people, and listen, there's nothing wrong with having money. And we'll read those scriptures here in a little while. Uh, how many of you know we need money to function? Amen. Uh, the church has got to have money to keep the lights on and, and everything in order. But I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful for air conditioning. Amen. Uh, we're not sitting this morning with the windows up and the humidity rolling in and everything and the bees. How many of you ever been in them services when an old wasp get into the service? Amen. Uh, I had a dear friend, I'll never forget it, Miss Molly. She is a black lady. I loved her. She said, Miss Molly's gone on to be with the Lord now. Sweet lady. Worked with her years ago. And she led her choir a lot of times. And they had a big choir thing down in Georgia. And she told me, she says, she told me, she said, Jeff said, I was leading the choir and said the choir was sounding good and things was going good. And she said, a yellow jacket got under my skirt. <laughs> she said, they thought the Holy Spirit had got a hold of me, but she said it was that yellow jacket. And me every know a yellow jacket can do some damage. Uh, I don't wear skirts, but I don't want him in my pant leg either. I'm being honest. She said, I went down and come back up. <laughs> yeah. but uh, So I'm thankful this morning for the air condition that we have. Amen? <laughs> and everything. But how many of you know that in this world, a lot of people looks at other people. And if people that's got money, that sometimes I think that people think that they got more respect than people that don't. Um, and uh, and honestly, and, I'm, and listen, and I said this last week, I believe God's got to work at it. I believe in working, amen? The Bible says a man don't work, don't eat, amen? And I believe, and the Bible says a man don't take care of his family, he's worse than an infidel. Uh, that means he's worse than an unbeliever, amen? And I believe we ought to work and take care of our families, and I'm going to say this, if you're a man and you bring children into this world, how many of you know it takes two to bring children into the world? Amen. Amen. It takes a man and a woman. If you bring children into this world, you ought to look after them. If they're yours, you ought to look after them. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. My son's got two, and then he's got one stepson. If he don't look after them children, me and him are going to have problems. And I told him one time not long ago, I said, now, you can lose your job, and these grandbabies can come live with Papa. I said, you can stay on the porch. <laughs> and all at once, that four-year-old granddaughter, she speaks up, and she says, I'm going to live with Papa. And Daddy, you can live on the porch. <laughs> and I liked it. Amen. But listen, if they're your children, and I believe most of you know that, and some of you even take care of your grandchildren. And I'm going to say this. I, I believe we've got a couple in the church that's taking care of one. It's no blood relation to them. And I, th I listen, I got the most up respect for Amen. that. Amen? Amen? Because it takes love. Amen? Yes. And the love. And I, 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 and Bobby, you and Miss Janie, I'm going to say this. I see the love in y'all's eyes for that child. Yes. And that's all right. You know what that is? That's the love of God. Amen? Yes. I'm being honest and I'm being truthful this morning. But getting on with the message this morning, 
two this morning. Two men here. We see two men, and we're going to read these verses. Look with me in verse number 19. The Bible says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was, which, which was laid at his gate full of sores, desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he might dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in, the, in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one raise, rose rather, from the dead. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne once again today, Father, it is with a grateful heart that we come to you, Lord, thanking you for this beautiful day of life that you've given us, Lord. Lord, we thank you once again for the opportunity that we have this side of eternity, Lord, just to be in your house today and to work, worship you, Lord, to exalt and uplift your name, Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we want you to know today that we love you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray and thank you for the good service that we've had thus far, Father. And Father, I pray and ask you to reach down now and touch the reading and the preaching of thy word, Lord. Let your word go forth and do that which it sent forth to do. Let it find a dwelling place and lodging place in our hearts today, Father. And Father, I just pray that if there be one watching, one in the midst that don't know you in the free pardon of sin, Father, I pray this would be the day <coughs> you reach down and finger that heart and that soul and draw that person to you, Lord, and save them before it's eternally everlasting too late. Father, reach down and touch the many prayer requests, Father, the many needs of our church, Lord. I just pray that you would meet them according to thy will. And now, Father, I just pray and ask you to go with us throughout the remainder of this day. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all these things. And for his sake, amen. You know, we look at these verses, and I said, now we're reading about two different men here. And we see two different men uh, and everything. And uh, many people think that this is a parable. But this was not a parable being told, I believe, by our Lord and Savior. But I believe this is something that really happened. And my good friend, Dean Chandler, who pastored the church and who I was friends with, who's gone on to be with the Lord, he made the con uh, statement one time when he preached from these messages that how Jesus knew about this was because he was present for the conversation. And now you can believe what you want, but I believe we see here this is not a parable. He uses the terminology, a certain rich man. Then he used the name Lazarus. So I believe today that there's a rich man that's found in these scriptures that's also now 
found in hell because he never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, or he never come to know God. Amen. Uh, he had no regard for the Lord at all, I believe, during his lifetime. But a lot of people believe that this is a parable, but I don't believe so. I believe this was an actual conversation that took place. And people, and you see that it's written in red. So this is something that the Lord Jesus Christ had told. And how do we know that he knew this was because, I mean, if you know that he's God, amen? And he was present for this conversation. And he begins to tell about this in verse 19. He said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. That means that he got richer every day. As the days went by, he got richer and richer. And listen, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having money. How many of you know? Uh, a lot of people will make the comment, They'll say, well, it's money that's the root of all evil. And I'm going to stop right here. And I want to point out something to you. This is a $10 bill, and this is none of my business. Uh, this money belongs to God now because you put it in the plate. But it's a $10 bill and a $50 bill here. And I'm going to lay that $50 back. I mean, if you know that dollar, that $10 bill right there, he can't see it. Can he? That ten dollar bill, that ten dollar bill is no different than that bottle of water right there. In fact, that ten dollar bill will buy that bottle of water, buy you a big pack of water probably. But it's no different. He can't he, listen. Who does the sin? We do. And it, and it's not that this is the root of all evil. That is not what the Bible says. But many people quote that wrong. The Bible says that it's the love of money. That is the root of all evil. And we can go back up into this chapter. And I want us to look at another verse that's found here in this same chapter. Now, Pastor's not quite as wound up as he sometimes is. But you look in verse 13 of this same chapter. It says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That means that you cannot serve God and wealth. Now, God didn't say that you couldn't have money, but do you all understand that a lot of times this is what runs people? This runs their life. If this is running you today, this becomes your God. You become a servant of it. You'll do anything and everything to get it. That's why me and Rob Bank. And try to get your savings. Because they're willing to do anything and everything to get it. Because of the power. I mean, you know, this represents power too. Yeah. It represents power in our world. It really does. And a lot of men today, corrupt men of evil. With evil intentions will do anything and everything to get their hands on more money. And many people today... They will do anything and everything to go forward. Amen. I've seen people work in church. I've seen good Christian people sit with computers in front of them in church on the pew while the preacher's preaching. And what are they doing? They're working. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now they get away with it because we have things like Facebook and they can sit at home and work and listen to the preacher. And listen, I'm not against work. Don't get me wrong. I work. But I believe everything's got its place. Amen. I'm being honest. And listen, I don't work today so that I can serve money and run after the things. But how many of you got a vehicle to drive? Amen. It's good to have a vehicle to drive. It's good to have the funds to put that, the gas in that vehicle. And the Lord knows we need that these days. Amen. It's good when God blesses us and gives us these things. And listen, I believe God means for us to work. Amen. But it ought not consume us and become our God. And I believe that's what we see in this rich man. We see two different lifestyles here, if you will. We see this man, and he, and listen, everything, you notice what the Bible says about it. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. He chased after the almighty dog, and it run him, if you will, amen? I don't know, there's two, there's two different men here and two different ways of life, amen? 
And look, look at the next verse. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. You notice that? Two different men and two different lives. Amen. Here's a man who's got all the money in the world. And, the, and all the beggar wanted was to be fed. But nowhere in these scriptures do we see that this man ever even let him have one crumb from his table. And I know we've all seen those people who stand out on the corner and they and they beg for money, don't they? Do you know that we're all just one step from that? Many people live one paycheck from that position. And I know many of them, they can go to work and get a job. And some of them are con artists. They really are. So I'll say this to you. Before you hand those folks your money, you better pray. I heard my uncle tell one one time. I'll never forget it. It was a man. We were going in and out of the Lighthouse Mission. And me and him was going there and we were preaching and having services with the men who were in that Lighthouse Mission. And there was one on the outside. And he came into service that evening, but then as he was leaving, he asked my uncle for five dollars. My uncle pulled that five dollar bill out of his wallet. He said, I'm gonna give you this five dollar bill. He said, But I want you to know there's something comes attached with it. The man was wanting it. He said he was wanting it to eat. He said he hadn't had nothing to eat. Of course the mission fed him. But he said, I want to go down to Burger King and get me a walk. What he told my uncle. My uncle told him, he said, well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to give you this $5. It stayed with me a long time, even to this day. He said, but I'm going to pray. He said, if you use this money for anything other than that walker or something to eat, he said, I pray God makes you so sick you puke up your toenails. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, that's pretty sick. And my uncle looked at me, he says, he uses that for anything other than getting him a whopper. He said, God's going to make him sick. I don't know what the man done with that $5. I bet, I hope to God he went and bought him a whopper because that's a heavy price, ain't it? I'd hate to think I'd be so sick that I'd be throwing up my toenails. <clears throat> but we see two different men. And, and listen, this is the same thing going on in our world today, is it not? People from different walks of life. This is what I want us to see. And listen, it don't make any difference. People from different walks of life. Two different men and two different lifestyles is what we're looking at here. Amen. We see one rich man and then we see one beggar. We see a man laying at his gate who's full of sores. And all he's desiring is to be fed from the crumbs of the table of this rich man. But we see this rich man walk on. No doubt many times he would probably ride in his fine carriages and come through the gate. I don't know about y'all, but this high picture, he'd come through that gate and he'd see Lazarus laying at that gate and he'd go on by him and, thought, and then think nothing about it. I'll say this much to you. When I see those people on the street corner, I think about it. And I give some of them money. I give a fella in Greensboro one time some money. And I give money to him. But honey, I got something to tell you. He got a Bible track too along with that $5 I give him. You see, we can give more than money. We can give out the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Give them the Word of God. And no doubt in my mind that at some point, Lazarus had been a witness to this rich man in some way, some shape, some form. But yet this man refused. To do what? To surrender to God. And many times he, he's doing here what a lot of people do today. Two different men from two different walks of life. One man, no doubt, was trusting God. And I know he's full of sores. And the Bible says that the dogs come and lick those sores. And the other man, he's trusting who? He's trusting in his riches. There are people today sitting on the church pews today in America who are trusting the church and their church membership to take them somewhere. But honey, I need to tell you something. Money can't buy your way into heaven. 
The church membership can't buy your way into heaven. You can't drive your way into heaven. It takes but one way, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? I see two men here, and both of these men, they need what? They need the Lord. Amen? What do we need today? We need God today. We need the Lord today. And it don't make any difference if you live in the White House or you live in the gutter. When you die, you're going to need Jesus. Bottom line, two men, two different walk, two different ways of life. Amen. Look with me, if you will. Hold your place there and turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. If you get there before me, you hang on, I'm coming. First Timothy chapter 6. Look at verse number 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. If you notice what the Bible says in verse 7, he says, For we brought nothing into this world, and we certainly we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. A lot of people are not content with the things that God has blessed them with. Amen? But you notice what he said. He said, For we brought nothing into this world, and we certainly can carry nothing out. How many of you know you know what Job said? He said, naked I came into this world, and naked I go back out. Amen? I brought nothing in, and I'm taking nothing out. Honey, I brought nothing in, but when I leave this scene of action, I'm going to leave with knowing that I know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's important today. And he said, and I believe God teaches us to be content. And God wants his children to have, and God will bless you, amen, and touch you. And help you along life's way. I don't see anybody in this building that don't have clothes on this morning, thank God. I've got mine on, you got yours on, amen. And they all look clean, amen. And all of us come in a vehicle and drove in, amen. And I'm thankful for that. And listen, God blesses his children, amen. When we give to God, he'll give back to us, amen. We give to him in a spoon and he gives back in a steam shovel, amen. Now, I believe that this morning. And there's all kinds of ways of giving to God. It's not always about what you put in the plate or I put in the plate. Sometimes it's about being faithful to God. And let me say something to you. There's a lot of people today that are faithful to a building like this that sits on the corner with a cross. But, honey, I got something to tell you. There's a difference in being faithful to God and being faithful to church. I believe what makes people be faithful to church is they faithful to God first. I knew you were either going to say, oh, me, or amen right there. Many times we have to say, oh, me. And what I mean by being faithful to God, how many of you know that the God you serve today while we're sitting in this building is the same God we serve tomorrow? Amen. A lot of people don't talk to God until they get into this rain. But, honey, I don't have to wait to get here to talk to God. And I don't know how to tell y'all this, but I'm not God. And you got the same opportunities that I have to talk to God. We all come to Him the same way, through the throne room of heaven, through the Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Being honest this morning, we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out. I've heard my mama say this many a time. You can die and go to hell doing nothing. You've got to do a little something to go to heaven. You've got to pray and ask God to forgive you of your sins and invite him into your heart and your life. Amen. But he said here in the book of Timothy, I brought nothing into this world, and I certainly we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that which... which <clears throat> but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish, hurtful lusts which draw men into destruction and perdition. You hear that? A lot of times people fall into things because they're chasing 
that dollar. They're chasing that power. They're chasing that money. Because that thing becomes their God. Anything can become your or my God. Anything that we put in His place. I mean, you know that He's a jealous God. He said, I'll have no other gods before me. But anything can... Listen, that pew right there can even become your God. You come down here every week. And before you come to church on Sunday, you got a key. You straighten that pew up. You wipe it down. You want to wait. It's, it's the perfect pew in all of the church. And sooner or later, you come down here and you start making over this pew. I mean, you know, a lot of people do that to their big head. A boat or a car. And listen, there's nothing wrong with having or even a house. I got a lawnmower. Yeah. Y'all know that was coming. Pastor loves his lawnmower, but not more than I love God. I'm thankful to God. I thank God every day, Melvin, that I'm able to go out there and get on it when I'm riding it. I thank him for it. Because first and foremost, it's his lawnmower. Amen. He blessed me to have the funds to buy it. Amen. It belongs to him. He just loaned it to me. I'm glad he taught me how to ride it. Otherwise, you Otherwise, the yard might look a little rough. But, and then he goes on in verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil. Rich man, which while some covet after, that they err from the faith, and piercing themselves through with many errors. You know, that's what the Bible says. A lot of times money draws people away from God. I've heard people say, Well, I'd be all right if I could just win the lottery. Would you be happy? Most people get a little money, they want a little more. Most people can't handle money. I've seen people win the lottery. I'm talking about big money. I'm talking about winning that big dollar, that, that ball, that red ball. Win that big money. And inside of four or five years, they're broke again. Come When money comes, great responsibility. It does. And I'm not throwing off on money this morning. I mean, we're looking at two men from two different walks of life. One who had in this life and one that didn't. We see two different men and two different ways of life, but then we see two deaths. Death is a certainty. You listen to me, life's uncertain, but death's a certainty. Amen. Death's been stalking your trail and my trail ever since we were born. Since the day that little fellow right there come into this world, do you know he's been dying just like us a little bit each day? And everybody's got a day that God has set aside. That's an appointment. And honey, I got something to tell you. We make a lot of appointments. We make doctor's appointments. We make dentist appointments. We make car appointments. And how many of you know we can call and counsel those appointments? But there's one appointment, honey, that we're going to keep, and that's the appointment of where God has appointed us that we're going to die. Sometimes we get close. Amen? And God says, no, this is not today. We got a man in this building, two men in this building. Brother Melvin, I believe you was at the point of death not long ago, brother. But you know what? God said, no, it's not his time. And I, hey, I said this to Miss Ann, and I know neither one of them minds me saying but I listened to that doctor that night. We was down there at the hospital. And brother, I believe you was at the point of death. I believe those doctors were at the point that they were ready to give up. But honey, I'm glad we got a God in heaven that never give up. Amen. And brother Keith, I know he's been at the point of death with COVID on a machine. But you know what? God said it's not his time. Pastor Jeff's going to need a medium man. Amen. Amen. I love it. Don't tell me God don't, don't stop things. God has the power. Listen, life and death still in his hands. If you don't think so, you go talk to a doctor and see what they tell you. Yeah, that's right, brother. We can go talk to you. Amen. I like that. Amen. But you ever notice how doctors, doctors will come in and they'll say, there's nothing else we can do. We give up. Honey, I got something to tell you. There might not be nothing else they can do, but I know there's one that can Amen. And he still has the power. And death and life still lies in his hands. Amen. But we see two men, two different walks of life. 
Not only that, but now we see both men, two different deaths. Amen? Two different deaths. Now y'all are beginning to see why I entitled this message, two. Amen? Two men, two lives, and now two deaths. Look what the Bible says, and it came to pass that the beggar died. Now poor Lazarus, he dies at the gate, no doubt, from hunger and from these sores and from being infected, no doubt. He's dead. When you die, that means the spirit that lives within you has departed from your body. Amen? And look what the Bible says, and he died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. You notice that? And the rich man also died and was buried. That's all the Bible says about him, ain't it? Abraham, into Abraham's bosom. And you listen to what I'm saying to you. At one time, there was a place called Sheol. A holding place, if you will. On this side would be hell, and on this side would be the paradise side. Listen, the paradise side is no longer there. When Jesus, uh, when Jesus uh, come out of the grave, he led all of that into heaven. Amen. All of that has changed now. But honey, there's certainly still a place called hell. Amen. Amen. And it's a place. And, and listen, you can believe it or not, it is a holding place. And, and, and let me say something to you. It's a cell that you'll never, ever get out of until the day of judgment comes. There are people in hell today who will be there until the day of judgment to be resurrected out of that place and to stand before God and to give an account. Because if you go to the book of Revelations and you look over in chapter 20, and you begin to read, you see that there's a new heaven and a new earth coming. And you'll begin to see also that the books are open and they'll be examined. And whoever's name's not found written in the Lamb's book of life, they take them and they cast them. You won't go back into that place called hell, but you go into a place called the lake of fire. And you'll be tormented there day and night. Guess who else is going to be there? Satan. He's going to be tormented. Be resurrected out of a place called hell. And the Bible says to be cast into a lake of fire is the second death. To be, do you know the horrible thing about it all is to be separated. Man don't realize this. But to be separated. We sung about it earlier. How many of you are thankful for God's grace? But do you know that there's coming a day when those people and Satan will be separated from the grace of Almighty God? That's the hell of it, if you will. To be separated from the presence of a holy and righteous God. Can you imagine not to be able to feel God? Now, I know we go through periods in our life here that we can't feel Him. But how many of you know that He shows back up? Amen. But if you wind up in that place called hell, you'll never feel Him again. And I believe the tortures of hell is not so much the flames, but I believe a lot of times it'll be the memory of maybe sitting in a church like this and hearing a message be preached and being given an opportunity and hold tight to that pew and not move and go back out that door unchanged, unmoved by the hand of God and listen and walk on without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet you were given that opportunity. And you ignored it. This rich man, no doubt, was given a lot of opportunities, but he died, and the beggar died. And now the beggar, he's where? He's in the presence of God. But let's look at the rich man. And the Bible says, and in hell. He's in hell. He trusted his riches. He trusted his money. And where did he get it? What did the Bible say a while ago? We brought nothing in, and we could take nothing out. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Now he's tormented. He's in this place called hell, and he's lifting his eyes. And what is he doing? He's praying. He's praying. 
And he's begging for mercy. No doubt, more than likely, at some point in his life, he was given an opportunity to beg for mercy, to ask God for mercy, but he wouldn't take that opportunity. Now it's too late. You say, Pastor, I've heard this stuff all my life. Yeah, hell don't become real until the point of death. Heaven don't become real. And, and listen, you listen to what I'm saying to you. These things don't become real to us until we're ready to close our eyes in death. Bob Ingram saw one of the great atheists of this world. He, he swore up down there was no God. There was no heaven. There was no hell. But when he was dying and laying on a hospital bed, he said, somebody pull me out of these flames that I'm in. Already, you see, a lot of times now we have sedation and we don't see the horror of people dying. Who knows that they're going to this awful place called hell? There was a young preacher to the church. And he had a deacon in his church who come to the point of death and he called for him. And the young preacher went over to his house. He said, I called you over here so you can see what happens when one of God's children goes home to be with God. He sat there all evening, three o'clock in the morning. The little 80-year-old man sat up in the bed. Big old smile come over his face, and he said, I see glory! And laid back down with a smile on his face and went to be with Jesus. Amen. You see the difference in Bob Ingersoll and a man of God? One's, one's begging to get him out of the flames. And the other one says, I see glory. This rich man now is in hell. He's died and Lazarus has died. And Lazarus now is in heaven or over on the paradise side, if you will, of Sheol. And listen, he's in torments. And look what he wants. He's still thinking about his self. He's still thinking about his self. Being in torments and Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. He's begging for mercy. There's no mercy in hell. This is a place that you'll pay for your sin debt. How many of you know that Christ paid our sin debt? Yeah. Amen. He went through, he took our beating, he took, listen, I've heard preachers say it, he took our hell on the cross, amen? Why would you want to die and go to this awful place called hell and pay for your sins when Christ has already paid the price? And all we have to do is repent and receive him as our Lord and Savior. But we said, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. He just wants one little drop, one little drop out of this bottle. He just wants Lazarus to take his finger and dip it and touch his tongue. Can you imagine? Because I'm tormented, he said, in this place. How many of you believe our Lord and Savior was tormented on the cross? Oh yes. One little drop of water. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy life receivest thou good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is coming, and thou art tormented. In other words, you had the riches of your life. You had your reward then. There's some, listen, there's some people living today who never accept Christ as their Savior. This is their heaven. They're living their heaven now. They have their reward now. I know that's hard to get a hold of, but I got something to say. If you never received Christ as your personal Savior, you better live it up here. You better enjoy your life here because the hereafter ain't going to be very pretty. A place of wailing and gnashing of teeth, a place of outer darkness where the worm dies not, the Bible says. And I've heard people say, well, I'll sell air conditions in hell. Right. Honey, I got something to tell you. You won't be selling anything in hell. Well, I'll be all right in hell. I'll have plenty of company. All my friends are gone. You won't know that they're there, and they won't know that you're there. The Bible says a place of wailing and national teeth, a place of outer darkness. And I believe there's a constant falling 
just a constant fall. You ever fail? You ever had that feeling like you was getting ready to fall out of the bed? Wake up and be dreaming and go to fall out of it? It's a constant fall. I believe that. And listen, you won't know that other people are there. You won't. You won't have no friends in hell. What kind of place and what kind of punishment would it be for mankind's sin if he went there to depart? <laughs> Honey, you want a party? Let's go to heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It won't be a party like people think. I've heard people say, well, I'll have the beer truck in hell. You better stop mocking hell. You better stop making fun about air conditions and beer and all those kinds of things being in hell. Because, honey, I got something to tell you. When you get to hell, God will remind you of those things. Memory. You notice what he said? Put a drop of water on my tongue. Mm. That means that he can feel, don't it? We're gonna be, people will be able to feel in hell. Just like they feel in heaven. Amen. Uh -huh. Heaven's just going to be one glorious day with the Lord. Amen. Time not going to mean a thing. But this man's now in hell. And he lifts his eyes in hell because he's in torment. And you notice what he said in verse 26. And besides all this, betwixt us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, and neither can they pass to us, and would come, and that would come from this. There's no getting out. There's no, listen, there's no in between. I say this, and I know most people in this building this morning professes to be saved, but truly and honestly, I only know about one heart in this building today, and it's mine. My heart today. And people are watching, no doubt, today. And they, listen, I know this is not popular preaching. And many people don't like to hear it. But honey, I got to tell you something. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. And this rich man was given an opportunity to shun hell. But he chose not. He chose not. And now he's still concerned about one thing. Himself. He wants one drop of water. And he can't get out. He can't get out. Because you notice what the Bible says. There's a great gulf fixed. That nobody can get out and nobody can get in. You know who owns the keys today? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. People say, why would God send somebody to an awful place like that? God don't send you there. You send yourself. By this rich man, he wound up in hell. Why? Because of his own doing. People go to hell today because of their own choices. How many of you know that life's about choices? And there's going to come a lot of time in your life. There come a time in my life, and we were given a choice. And people that are watching today, there'll come a time in your life. It may be today. You're going to be given a choice. Amen. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared unto all men. Opportunity. There was a day when God said, and you opened the door and you said, Hello, come on in. Aren't you thankful for that day? Please, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me. I believe you died for me. I believe you was buried for me. Just for me. Ain't that wonderful? Just for me. You did all those things. So that I wouldn't have to go to that awful place called me. Thank you, Lord. Please save me. Whew, ain't that wonderful? I tell you what, if I wasn't already saved, I believe I'd be under conviction. I'm being honest. I got a cold chill. I got a breath of air from another world. Whew, and it wasn't our air conditioning either. Whew, boy, it felt good. Feels good now, amen? I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. Aren't you glad for the day that you opened the door? Look what you got. Look what you've avoided. People say, well, you just crazy. Well, leave me alone. Let me stay crazy. I've had people say, you're a nut. Leave me alone. I'm screwed on the right boat, Brother Ray. 
I'm being honest this morning. I'm being truthful this morning. You have the world. Just give me Jesus. Amen. He said it. What will man give in exchange for his soul? What if you gain the whole world but yet lose your soul? What will you exchange for your soul? What will you give for your soul? This rich man now, he's praying. He wants mercy. He wants a drop of water. He wants out, don't he? But there ain't no getting out because there's a great gulf fixed. Nobody gets in, nobody gets out. God controls all those things. I heard a preacher say one time, ain't it a shame Satan ain't even got the keys to his future home? He don't. Jesus has got those keys. How many of you know the keys is a sign of authority? Honey, I got something to tell you. My Lord's got the authority. Amen. Aren't you glad today that he has? Look at verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Now look, he's still concerned. Now he's got concern for his family. Amen. You ever notice how it is when we get saved? We want somebody else, don't we? You want to share that thing. First thing you want to do is share that with who? You want to share it with your family. There's not a person in this room that don't want every member of their family to go to heaven. If you don't, something's wrong with you. Something wrong with your salvation. Listen, my wife's in here, and I want her to go to heaven. And I know she's saved, amen. I want my grandchildren to go to heaven. When that oldest grandson come back from camp that time, and he got off that bus, and he said, Papa, I got something to tell you. And I said, well, tell me, boy. He said, while I was going to camp, he said, I received Christ into my heart and my life. I like to have a spade. I like to run across that parking lot. I told Melissa, I said, today I could run all the way home and back. It might not mean much to you, but it meant something to me. And me and him, we've already had a talk about that granddaughter, me and God. She loves music. She's going to play the piano one day. Me and God, listen, she might stray and listen, but I believe, listen, I cover her in the blood, and I believe one day God's going to save her, and I believe God's going to call her to play the piano. I'm being honest. You say, you believe that, Pastor? Yes, I do. Because me and the Lord's have talked. Now, it might be a few years down the road, but how many of you believe God and answer prayers? Amen? Amen. You ought to be concerned about your grandchildren and your family, your loved ones. Amen? Amen? I'm being honest. Don't get concerned about them after they get sick and get in the hospital. Be concerned about them now. Talk to them now. Amen? Talk to them about what? About Christ. About what he did on the cross of Calvary. You notice what he said. He says, well, I have five brethren that he might testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. Now he don't want his brothers to come to hell, does he? He said, I'm worried about my brother. What about himself? He worried about himself during that and while he was in this walk of life. And when God knocked on his heart, if he'd opened the door, he wouldn't be in hell and he could testify to his brothers. Mm -hmm. See, there's people in hell today just like this man. They want mercy. They want a drop of water. They want out. And guess what? They don't want their family to come there either. But after you pass into that place, it's too late. It's too late. Amen. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. How many of you know that our God's living today? Amen. And I don't know about you, but Sister Janie, it's fearful to think that we're in His hands. I get afraid just sometimes thinking about this one day that I'm going to stand before him and give an account of my life. Give an account for every message that I've ever preached. And now that I'm pastoring this church, I give him an account for you. Not for the things that you've done, but how I, how I tend to the flock. People don't believe that, but you do. And why do you think a pastor gets so concerned when his people go missing? Because he's going to give an account for you. He ought to love you and care for you. He's the under-shepherd. And listen, he's following the shepherd, and you follow the under-shepherd as he's following the shepherd. If I stop following the shepherd, shoot me in the head and be done with me. 
thought I'd get a laugh back. Oh well. But I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. You worry about your people. Amen. And I'm concerned about your soul. And I'm concerned about your relationship with God. And I'm concerned about the people that watches us. Most of those people I don't know. But guess what? They got a soul. And we ought to be concerned about where they're going to spend eternity. It's too late once you pass up. Listen, even once we get to heaven, it's too late. Once we go home to be with the Lord, we can't testify to them people anymore, can we? We need to testify to them now. Talk to them now. Talk to your grandchildren now. Talk to your people now. Those people you work with. Listen, because we don't know. Tomorrow may never come. It may never come. Listen, we might get up in the morning and Jesus split the eastern sky. My grandma used to say she thought he was coming in the morning. I don't know when he's coming, but honey, he's coming. But if the rapture takes place, you can't talk to those people no more. And anybody's left behind, it's too late. It's too late. I believe anybody that's lived during the church age now, if they're left behind, the Bible says that God's going to let great delusion fall upon the people. I believe most of those people will take them on. You know what's sad? There's a lot of people sitting in churches today on pews just like this, and they're going to be left behind. Because they're not trusting Christ. They're trusting who? They're trusting their church membership and the things that they do for the church. Oh, the things that you do for the church is wonderful. The things that I do for the church is wonderful. Listen, I'm thankful God put a calling on my life. But hey, preaching God's word didn't save me. It took the blood of Jesus Christ to save me. I do this now because of the life that he lived. He lives through me now. Amen. Because he changed my life and because he called me. That's the reason that I do the things that I do for God. Because of the cross of Calvary. I'm not trying to work my way to heaven. I'll never forget. I believe it was the Bill Cosby show that I was watching. And he told his son, he said, don't you believe everything Grandma tells you? She's an old lady trying to work her way into heaven now. <laughs> I got something to tell you, honey. Grandma can't work her way in, and me and you can't work our way in. There's not but one way, and Jesus said, I'm that way. We can't work our way into heaven. The rich man couldn't buy his way in. Lazarus couldn't work his way in. It takes faith and trust in Jesus Christ and the finished work of Calvary. Amen. I'm being honest. He said, I got five brethren. I want you to go talk to them. Send Lazarus. Look what he says. Abraham says unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let him hear them. Same thing God say to a man today. I've got preachers. I've got a man. God's always got somebody standing in the gap. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. As long as there's breath in my life, I'm going to stand in the gap. Amen. And if I stop preaching the word, I've instructed Miss Melissa to shoot me and be done. I'll do it. Amen. <laughs> She's to follow my instructions. Amen. And y'all not to stop her. I'm being honest. If I stop preaching the word, Gee, y'all know something's done happen. Pastor done fell off his rock. Or his rocker. Amen. My feet's standing on the rock, Sister Ann. Amen. I'm on the rock. And we might slip and slide around on that rock, but he still got us. Amen. And I'm thankful. I'm kept by the power of God. My mind goes. Amen. I mean, I'd be better off to go home and be with the Lord. Amen. But by God's grace, I'm not going to preach any other gospel other than the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He's the only way to heaven. All the roads might lead into Rome, but there ain't but one road to heaven, and it's Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And here he said there, he said, let them hear Moses and let them hear the prophets. God says the same thing today. He says, let them hear my man. Let them hear the word of God. Amen. Being preached by who? Being preached by the man of God. Amen. I'm not talking about a man that's being called by, called by daddy and sent by mama. 
I'm talking about a man that God puts his hand on. Honey, I'm glad your pastor saved today. He Amen. saved me first, then he called me. Amen. I'm glad for the day that he saved me. Being called by him is an honor and a privilege to stand because this is a sacred place to stand. Amen. He told Moses, he said, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. And I believe when we come in God's house, we're on holy ground. Amen. Mm-hmm. What makes this ground holy? It's because we bring God in with us. Amen. And this is a place been set aside and sanctified to worship God in. Amen. And I don't think it ought to be used for anything else, even going forward. I'm being honest and being truthful. Look what he says back to him. He said, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Really? Really? I believe God right here is scratching his head. Because you look what he says. And he said unto him, If they if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one raised from the dead. How many of you know that's true? You know the Bible says that Jesus was seen of over 500 witnesses at one time after his resurrection. But yet people today still don't believe. Mm -hmm. The Bible says been seen over 500, over 500 witnesses at one time. And people still today don't believe. They didn't believe in his day. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty powerful witness, 500 people seeing him at one time. It's been enough for me to hear Peter say, hey, I saw him. Amen. How many of you know that Paul got a personal experience with him on the road to Damascus? Amen. He knocked Paul's butt to the ground and blinded him. He got Paul's attention. He was Saul at that time. Then he changed his name. And Paul became one of the greatest missionaries for God that there's ever been. And God permitted him to write in the Word of God. Many of the latter uh, books of the Bible are written by Paul. Amen. Many of the uh, epistles and things are written by him. There's been men who have seen him. Amen. They're apostles. Honey, there's not an apostle alive today because nobody today has ever seen him. And that had to be under a requirement. You say, well, I see these men and and, and everything on TV. It's got apostle in front of their name. I want them to tell me when they see him. You had to personally see him, amen. I mean, if you know that Paul saw him, amen, had a personal experience with him. James and John and Peter, all of them had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. They're his apostles, amen. That office is no longer operating today. Get mad at me, it's okay. But there were requirements. I believe before a man stands in the pulpit, he ought to be a saved man. Amen? And I know there's ladies in the audience. In case you're wondering, I don't know if pastors ever told you, I don't believe in women preachers. I'm being honest. Now there's going to be people who get upset with me. People watching. But the Bible says this woman's not to have some authority over the man. Amen? Not my words, they're God's words. You look it up. You read it. Now listen, I believe every woman has a place. And her place is alongside her husband. Amen. I'm being honest. She's not some whipping post. And I don't know how we got here, but we got here, Lord. She's not some beating post. You know, Miss Melissa's my wife, and I love her. And how many of you believe that she prays for her husband? She prays for me. Sometimes she prays in our home out loud. Now you men can get upset if you want to. But when your pastor gets sick, he likes for his wife to pray for him. I'll tell her. Sometimes my joints hurt, and I'll say, baby, pray for my joints. She'll put her hand over on my hand, and she'll pray. And that's all right. God hears her prayers, too. Amen. And there's coming a day, honey, when we go home to be with the Lord, there won't be no giving and taking in marriage. But she won't be my wife in heaven. But we'll be together in heaven. Amen. Aren't you thankful? Amen. Y'all not thankful she's going to be with me in heaven? <laughs> we'll all be together. Amen. And I don't know how we got there, but we got there. Amen. Now, people get upset with you over these things. 
But people need to understand what we believe and what we preach down here. We don't preach part of the counsel of God. We preach the whole counsel of God. Amen? And we preach the Bible. Being honest, being truthful. People don't want to come here, don't want to hear the Word of God, then don't come here. I'm being honest, being truthful, because we still believe Jesus is King, and He's the only way to heaven. Amen? And we preach the Word of God, not just in part, but we try our best to preach and teach the Word of God in its entirety. Amen? I try to study and show myself approved, not unto you, but under God. You need to study and show yourself approved. Unto who? Unto the Master today. Unto God. Amen. We don't need man's approval. We're looking for God's approval. Amen. I want to please Him today. And though one raised from the dead, He said, they'd not be persuaded. Now I got something to say right here in closing. Jesus says it. In John chapter number 14. This morning we've talked about twos. We talked about two men. We talked to two, about two ways of life. We talked about two deaths. We've talked about two destinations. I might not give you that. But there are. There are two destinations. There's either heaven or there's hell. Choose Jesus and choose life and be in heaven. Or choose the latter. Choose, uh, choose to walk on and walk on straight on into hell. Bottom line, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no man, chapter 14, verse 6, no man cometh to the, unto the Father except by me. Two, two men, two ways of life. There was two deaths and two destinations, but only one way to heaven. And that way is Jesus this morning. Amen. We looked at two men today, and we looked at their lives. We saw that they both died. We saw that there was two different destinations. But, honey, I got something to tell you. There's not but one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Through repentance towards him. Amen. How did Lazarus get to heaven? Because he repented and asked God to forgive him of his sins. How do we get to heaven? How do I get eternal life? Repent and receive Christ as your Savior. Amen. Those of you that are watching today, how do you get to heaven? By repenting of your sins and receiving Christ as your Savior. You know what that means? That means He's standing today. You know how Christ is standing today? This is how He stands, Brother Melvin. I believe He stands at the foothold or the threshold of the of the earth. And he looks, just as he stood on that hill that day before Jerusalem. And he said, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, how oft I would have taken you under my wing, but you would not. He said he would take you in, just as a mother hen takes her chicks in, but you would not. You would not. You know, they've seen it happen. A mother hen taking her chicks a barn catches fire. How many of you know that that mother hen will shield those baby chicks? She'll give her life for them. Many a farmer, when his barn has burned to the ground, go out there, I've heard them talk about this, and that mother hen, they'll get her and move her, and those little chicks will run out because they're still alive. You know why? Because she gave her life that they might live. Oh, honey, I don't know about you, but that makes me want to have a spell with his hand. He gave them his life that I might have life. Amen. And he stands with open arms, ready to receive. Amen. Will you receive him today? Do you hear him today? Do you hear him knocking? But is that knock getting quieter? As time goes by, is it getting quieter? You that are watching today, friend, is that not quieter today than it was last Sunday? Maybe than it was Wednesday evening? Is it, getting quiet? is it quieter than what it was yesterday? Listen, God don't have a time set. Listen, he can knock at any time. Can he? he can knock. But you know what I believe today? I believe today that he's knocking. Will you open that door 
Will you let him in? Will you let him change your life? Change your destination? Amen. You know what we were? We were nobody headed nowhere. Now we're somebody headed somewhere. Amen. I was lost and undone. You're lost and undone without Christ today. Headed to a devil's head like this rich man. Don't you want to go to heaven and be with the Lord and maybe be with those loved ones that have gone home? Or would you choose the latter? Would you choose to die and go to a place of outer darkness where there's wailing, gnashing the teeth, and the worm dieth not? Where there's a place of constant falling, constant torment. This man wanted one drop of water. Begged for mercy. Or would we go and be with the Lord and be at peace and be at rest? An endless day. Beautiful day. Think about a day, and listen, I don't know, but I always think about it being 75 degrees and no humidity. Amen. And listen, the S-O-N is going to light that place. Amen. An endless day of nothing but praising God and being in His presence, being in our loved one's presence, and being at rest. Don't that sound better than the other? Yes. And all you have to do is open that door and let Him in. Repent and receive Christ. And believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what? If you'll ask him, he'll save you. Will you ask him today? Maybe you're here. Maybe you're, maybe you're watching. I don't know. Everyone I believe in the building professes to be saved. But you listen. You mind God. Whatever the need may be this morning. Maybe something's got between you and God. Why not come and get it out of the way? He's still standing. He's the same Savior that saved you. He's just saying, come on back. Come on back. Aren't you glad that we have a God that's forgiven even after being saved? He'll still forgive. He, he, he just says, come on, let's talk about it. I'm glad we have a God that we can sit down and talk to. Amen. And when I say sit down, sit down with him at home. Take the Word of God and read the Word of God and sit down with Him at home. Talk to Him in the car. Talk to Him every day. Have a real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you want that today? He's knocking. Why not today as we stand all over the house? Why not come to Him today? Why not receive Him as your Savior and avoid that place called hell? Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking about but myself. Then you folks that are watching today, I can't see your hands. I can't see your hands, but God can. God can. God knows your heart today. You know your heart today. Those of you that are here today that know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. You'd say, Pastor, if the rapture took place or if the death angel comes today, I'm going home to be with God. Would you just lift that hand towards heaven? Would you lift those hands? Amen. 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 Now, I believe every hand in the house was raised. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. We love you today. Thank you, God. Thank you. But there may be some folks watching today who would say, hey, I, if I was there, or even now, I can't raise my hand to that. I want my church family to pray for those folks right now. I know we can't see them, but I want you to pray for them right now. Just pray that God will touch them today. Sometime before this day is over, that they'll answer that knock. You that are watching, Maybe you raised that hand. That's awesome. That's great. We love you, Lord. Thank you for them. But maybe you'd say, Pastor, I couldn't, I couldn't raise that hand. I couldn't raise my hand. Even if I was in church today, I couldn't raise my hand. Why not answer that door today? Do you hear him?
Just just open your heart's door. It's as easy going opening that door as it is to go to your front door and open. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come on in. Sit down and talk with me. I believe there's somebody watching today that needs Jesus. Please, church, pray. Listen, friend. All you got to do is just simply confess to Him. Tell Him and ask Him to forgive you. And guess what He'll do? He'll save you today if you'll let Him. Will you open that door? Will you let Him come in and let Him talk with you? Let Him wash your sins as white as snow. Let Him forgive you. Look, just confess to Him and ask Him to forgive you. I can't answer the door for you. I can't pray for you today. I can't I can't say that prayer for you today. But you, you pray and talk to God in your own words. Because the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with, them, with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's opening your heart's door and calling on him. Asking Him to forgive you of your sins. Inviting Him into your heart and your life today. And then just simply believing in the finished work of Calvary. That's salvation. Just ask Him today. Would you? Would you do that? Would you ask Him today? Please do. And if you do that, I want to I want to encourage you to get into a Bible-believing church. If you live around here, come be a part of us. Come be down here to Good Samaritan. But if not, get in a good Bible-believing church. A place where the Word's being taught and preached. I'm being honest today. Please, dear friend, you're not promised a tomorrow. As we pray, whatever the need may be. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne once again, Father, we're so thankful to you, Lord. We're so thankful to you, Lord, and we love you today, Father. We do. We love you today. And Lord, I just feel that there's been somebody watching today. Father, I... I don't know who they are or where they are, but you do. Lord, please speak to that heart. Father, please help them to get, please, God, help them get that door open, Lord, and let you in. Please save them, Father, before it's eternally everlasting too late. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this church family. Thank you for the ones that are here today, Father, that testify that they know you. Thank you for them, Lord. Father, I just say thank you for this church family, Father. Thank you for your hand being upon us, Lord, and helping us, Lord. Father, I ask you just to reach down and touch the many needs of our church, Father. Those who are sick and afflicted, help them, Lord. Father, just help us all to grow closer to you day after day to walk in a life that would be pleasing unto you. And bring honor and glory to your precious holy name. Father, just help us today. Father, just, just lead us, guide us, and direct us, Lord. We need you today. Father, I just pray ask you to bless every home that makes this church up. Touch everyone that listens, Lord, to those that watch, Lord, put your hand upon them as well. Go with us, Father, as we go our separate ways today. We'll be careful to give you the honor and praise and glory for it all. 
For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all these things. And for his sake. Amen. Well, it's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord today. And uh, please continue to pray for those folks that are watching. And uh, pray one for another. And pray for Sister Marie and Miss Evelyn and everything. Pray for each and every one of them. We'll keep you updated on things that's going on with Miss Marie and Miss Evelyn and Brother Jerry and everything. So just continue to remember those folks and everything. And let's just pray one for another this week. Amen. Uh, how many have seen the sign out at the end here? Anybody seen it? Everybody see it on Facebook? We replaced the sign. It's out here on, at the end of um, Palatine and we're 64 and Palatine coming together. We put a new uh, sign out there. Now listen, I know the signpost looks like it needs to be painted. We're going to take care of that. <laughs> it, it looks rough. I admit it after looking at the pictures. It looks rough with that brand new sign in it. So I'm going to get some black spray paint or some black paint and we're going to take care of it. But if you're out that way, take a look at it and everything looks really good. My good friend Ken Smith done that one and everything. And uh, y'all pray for Brother Ken. I'm going to give him to do us another one and everything, maybe a couple more. We're going to be in touch with the city and see where we can put them. I want to put one here at the end of Farmer and then one down here at the end of Palatine too. And maybe one up when you get off the expressway. We'll see. We'll see what the city will let us do. But now the state approved for that one to be out there. But we've replaced that one out there. That was a pretty bad looking sign that was out there and everything. Uh, it took me and Roger 45 minutes to get that thing out of the hole. Uh, we, it took us a while. It was rusting in there pretty good. So, But we got it changed out and everything. And uh, Pastor promises I'm going to paint the post and everything. Uh, it was pointed out to me by some very influential ladies in the church that the post needs to be painted, so we're going to paint it and everything and make it look better too. And uh, just be in much prayer and pray for our visitation next uh, Saturday. I know many of you can't come and go. Pray for us that will be on visitation. Amen. And uh, I'm going to have, uh, we'll have a map soon of the area around here, an aerial view. It'll be back here on this bulletin board of the places that we've left Bible tracks and everything. And Miss Annette has agreed to get that fixed for us. I appreciate Miss Annette doing that for us too as well. So uh, just, and then you'll be able to see all the places that we've been and visited. Amen. And as that map needs changing, we'll, we'll try to have it changed. But she's going to give us an aerial view of the street, and we're going to highlight all the places that we've been that way and everything. That way, when we need to go back and revisit, we can. Uh, like I said, just be in much prayer this week for each and every one. And if y'all get past your time to get to the back door, I'll say a prayer, and we'll be dismissed. All right. Father in heaven, as we bow before that throne once again today, Father, it is with a grateful heart that we come to you, Lord, thanking you for this beautiful time that you've given us to be in your house today. And now, Father, go with us as we go our separate ways, bring us back to the next appointed time, Father. We'll be careful to give you the honor and praise and glory for it all. These things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.